How strong are butt-to-not soft shackles made out of plasma? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and I'm here today with Matt Stoling and Lorenzo De Muro. And uh, Sean Simmons bought us some plasma, which is a Dyneema, instead of Amsteel, it's plasma, it's a different brand, uh, just to see if it was similar in strength. So we made a handful of soft shackles out of them, and we're going to test them today in different configurations to see how strong they are. So we have six samples we're gonna break today. They're all the same plasma material, which is kind of what we want to test, but we also want to see how strong button nuts are. Plasma is the high molecular poly weight metal ethylene or something. Anyways, it's fucking Dyneema, okay? It's the same stuff as Amsteel, but it's a different cute color. So we're going to find out if it's just as strong, but mostly we're going to test different configurations. Uh, what we have here is a normal button knot with a normal noose that goes over it. And we have two of those for a control sample since this is the most, the thing we want to know the most. But this is also the same, uh, the same way we did it, however this is locked. So instead of putting it right over the top, we go under itself and then make it kiss its own ass. So we have found these, uh, these make people feel better about not coming apart. However, we are finding they break significantly lower. So we're gonna test that. We're gonna test tails not being buried and see if that makes a difference. Because the noose going around four strands of Dyneema, because it generally breaks right here, is what makes it strong. Not the fact that the tails are not gonna come out of this knot. So in theory, that should be just as strong. However, it's not very pretty. This, we never did set the knot. This is a squishy, soft knot, and this sh should deform the button knot and come off significantly lower than a set knot. Setting your knots on button knots is very important. And our sixth test is a unique idea that Matthew Warwick told me about, where instead of doing the eye splice where the, the noose is normally just, just that, is you put it in a second time and then you have this girth hitch, sort of, that you can put over the noose and it makes you also feel better about it not likely to come off. And wherever you have two strands spliced through the same Amsteel that is split six strands and six strands. We have a feeling like this might break pretty low, but it's interesting because it always breaks right here on the noose. So in theory, this part would be stronger, but it's pulling pretty unfavorably right here. So uh, let's start breaking on the slack set machine. So our slack snap machine is basically a dynamometer fixed to this side. And then we have this shackle that is attached to this 10 pulley system for our 20 to one. And Lorenzo apparently doesn't know how this works because he's trying to pull it apart <laughs> instead of using the button, which is conveniently right here. <laughs> which pulls 20 strands of six millimeter Dyneema rope. Amsteel. We're using Amsteel to break Amsteel. It's very cannibalistic. We're just curious what the last point is holding. We have a whoopee sling to extend because I'm too cheap to buy a long enough rope. Aluminum non-locking carabiner, which is so classic. And these are the fixed pulleys on this side. And our winch pulls it in. Double spool. Double strand. So that means it's coming in twice as fast at a 10 to 1 speed, even though it is a 20 to 1 strength. We use this to catch it so it doesn't fly all over the place and it basically pulls this apart from the other one until things go snap. Eighteen thousand and fifty pounds broke the noose. Last strand of our twenty to one is only five kilos. That's that's a thousand pounds. That's pretty legit. Something else interesting about our first sample here was this strand right here is Amsteel rarely breaks clean all twelve strands of the twelve braids that it is. Another interesting thing is this button knot had some broken strands start to happen inside of it. Not quite sure how or what. 
465. This is just normal use soft shackle. What does it read at? 16,000. Whoa, 2,000 pounds less than the other one. That's quite a bit different, but plenty strong still. So this locked soft shackle is stiff, super, super stiff. It uh, broke at the noose like it's supposed to, and pretty much doesn't have too much damage. And I don't think it broke anything in the button knot this time, whereas the last two it did. It performed pretty good. It did break a thousand pounds lower than our lowest normal sample, but you're talking about such high forces relative for our highlining needs. It doesn't matter. So something super interesting about this lock soft shackle is it takes up quite a bit more uh, distance of your soft shackle to tie it off. So this distance was really hard to connect to this shackle and this one and get it installed. Even with uh, the two shackles touching, you would definitely have to make these kind longer if you wanted to do a locked. Eleven thousand six hundred and fifty pounds for sample two thirty, which is our tails not buried. I understand why the tails need to be buried. Woo, feel you want to feel my knot? Oh wow, that's warm. That's warm. Whoa, ninety five degrees. Ninety seven, and it's normally sixty to sixty four degrees. No. After it's cooled off quite a bit, it came totally undone. It oh, it was did like, it, so it didn't break the noose. It broke the knot. Oh, why? It's okay. It's reading different. So that's 82. If I go back to the side where I was before. Oh, it gets hot. Oh, at the top is where it's hot. Oh, ah. very... oh the noose broke. Yeah. It's supposed to deform yeah, this and slide look off. At that not though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. Normally, I, I've had ha this happen in the past where the noose slips off because it deforms. Yeah, and then it becomes like this like collar. And it kind of looks like this, but it ends up slipping off the top. Um, it actually happened to one of these big guys. Um, not this one particularly, but it did look, it looked like a snake head when I was done. Something this yeah. big, this thing slipped off of it because clearly I'm not gonna break this, mm -hmm. but uh, it slipped off and the dynamometer hit the tree that I was using, uh, so. That was quite unpredictable and scary. And I was expecting that to do the same. So, what was the reading on this? From the... Yeah, what's the dino say? We're at 16, 30, 300. 16, what? An unset knot at full strength? Yeah. Huh. Maybe it's just So we can tell before we've really even put significant tension on this that because of the captive eye here and the way it extends in both directions from it, this strand is already seeing the majority of the load. I cannot bend that with my fingers no matter how hard I try, but this one still has a noticeable amount of play in it. So this one is seeing much higher tension than this one. Sometimes Amsteel will correct itself by just slipping. Uh, 15,000 even. Huh. That's not too bad. Okay. No, I think it melted it together. Wait, I think I know what happened. This would be like a normal girth hitch. And like usually, you know, this bridge is keeping everything on. But we've gone through, and so there's only half of this strand holding these in place. Yeah, because and our soft so, shackle has the six strands on this back yeah, side Yeah, and so well. essentially this outside part just broke, and the whole thing is, was now as if it was this, and it just came open and, like, unraveled. Yeah, yeah so because this theory, thing... This... There's six strands still in contact, and six that are broke. Wow. That is unique. 
it actually did not lower the braking strength. It is probably diff more difficult to undo and set and reset because of the way it girth hitches it together, you really have to loosen it up. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really worried about soft shackles coming undone, I guess this would be your way of doing it because It'd be interesting to try that. it's apparently strong enough. Since the point of this episode is to compare plasma with Amsteel, we repeated all those breaks with Amsteel. And to spare you from having to watch all of that, here is a chart with all that information. And yes, it has kilonewtons. You're welcome. The biggest difference that I notice between plasma and Amsteel is that plasma is very stiff and Amsteel can do this. Plasma is very stiff. It feels like Amsteel after you've pulled it real tight and it has that stiff feel and you got to massage it out. It's how it feels all the time. It's kind of it's not that great to work with, but if you like purple, you should buy plasma because they basically are the same. As far as the configurations go, basically everything's pretty strong. Um, the normal ones have quite a variation in them. That's just kind of what happens with soft shackles, but the safety ratio is so high for our use as highliners that I'm not worried about these at all. It was kind of enlightening when we did the locked test on our Amsteel, this kind, and it basically, it's pulling so aggressively right here that it slipped off the head when we tested this one and which this is how I used it in the past is I'd put it between two sewing loops to get rid of that knot so it's not in the way. Um, but it slipped off this head. And I definitely always bury my tails and definitely think you should too. Um, even though it did break high, I don't like how the Amsteel is pulling through the knot while you put tension on it. So it's definitely do it the proper way even though we did test it. I just wanted to see what worst case scenario is in case people don't do things right to see where the like catastrophic failure would be. Now unset knots are a little interesting because they do basically, if they break at the noose, will break at full strength or in our Amsteel case, more than full strength, more than I've ever gotten in the past at 19,000 pounds. However, if you don't set your knot properly, it can get deformed and the noose can slip off significantly lower than what you're hoping it holds. Now, to set the knot, I, we, we have discovered after doing a lot of tests since even making this video earlier, um, that we only set it by doing this, and ironically we pull on it, which is the opposite of what you would think, but we pull on it like this, and if you uh, don't have a slack snap machine in your garage, just go to the park with your pulleys and take a 15 to 1 pulley system for like long lining and pull it by yourself. And then what you do is you flip it 180 degrees and put it on there again. So you're pulling the knot in, in two directions and pull this again, but even harder and then do it one more time and get three of your friends to pull on the 15 to 1 and then flip it again one last time. And you're going to achieve about six, seven, or eight kilonewtons when you have three of your friends pulling. And that is more than you'll ever get on a high line with these. And they'll be set rock hard every single time. It's how we set all of our set button knots for these tests. As far as the girth hitch thing goes, I'm not sold on it. It's a clever idea that Matthew Warwick brought up. Um, I don't think it really achieves anything. It takes more am steel and you could always take this and create a loop like that and then stick it over the head which we also did test but I didn't want to get any more variations in the video and it doesn't pull the strands evenly in that configuration. It doesn't solve anything. Even an unset knot we tried to see if like it helps prevent it from slipping off. It, it basically does nothing. It takes a little bit more amp steel. And if you do it the way we spliced it for this video, it's limiting to always having to do that with your soft shackle. If sometimes you don't want to, you'd be screwed. Anyways, let me know what other kind of amp steel tests you want to see, and we will put it on the slack snap machine. Now, all of these connectors are really strong and float in water, but we get a large variation in our results. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.